folks, we are over in Glencarnock in the Northwest Highlands in a place called Fasnacail Hill. And the reason I'm here today is I wanted to talk to you about a, an important project I've been involved in over the last several years and it focuses on restoring native woodland at uh, high elevations and forms part of a, a habitat which is now almost completely absent in Scotland. The whole hill is 4,000 hectares in size with approximately 2,000 hectares of that the open hill above the uh, existing tree line a very artificial tree line I should say. The highest point of the hill is 760 meters or 2,350 feet. As I just mentioned we're in Glencarnock and to the south over the hill there is Glenafric and to the north over the hills this way is Glenstrathfara and kind of down the hill and round the corner behind me when you're looking out west you see uh, Loch Malardach and the Malardach Hydroelectric Dam and this hill was purchased by the Forestry Commission in 1951 up until that point it had been managed as a fairly standard highland deer forest for sport shooting with grazing rights for sheep maintained until around the 1970s present in the area already is quite a lot of forestry plantation mostly native scots pine but there has been a mix of non-native species as well on the glencanic side here there's been a lot of work over the last couple of decades to remove those non-native species and we've also got quite a few nice pockets of uh, native woodland including Caledonian pinewood remnants and despite past management the open hill still has a significant population of scattered juniper, dwarf birch and willow species so already there's a, a decent mix of habitats to build on. On to the project itself uh, the general vision for the area in terms of future management is to build on what is already present and also to restore habitats that are missing and that will hopefully result in a natural progression from the high forest at the bottom of the hill up through kind of mountain high elevation woodland into a matrix of sort of montane scrub peatland and sort of more open heathland on the top of the hill itself our higher elevation mountain woodlands and montane scrub zones are almost non-existent in scotland and in terms of habitats they really are one of our most threatened mountain birch woodland is heavily fragmented and we're left with these tiny isolated populations and our montane scrub remnants which are often just a few hundred plants are basically surviving on inaccessible rock faces in the early 2000s this missing habitat was starting to get a lot more recognition in Scotland and the wider UK and since then our general knowledge and awareness has just kept increasing. My boss and mentor at the time, a Mr Kenny Hay, who was the forester here before me and who I still have the, the privilege of working with from time to time, he, he did a lot of good work to persuade colleagues and stakeholders to basically engage with quite a you know a pioneering high elevation woodland restoration project there was extensive consultation carried out internally and externally on whether or not we should intervene or let nature take its course over the next 250 years as an organization we talked to land managers ecologists, biologists from various organisations such as Nature Scott, uh, RSPB Scotland, local deer management groups and even the Mountain Woodland Action Group. Long story short they basically came to a compromise and they split the hill, the open hill, roughly into two parts and it was one half for natural regeneration 
and the other half for intervention. As well as the overall sort of positive nature of the project, there were also some other benefits and other factors which allowed a project like this to be feasible. Deer management is a big one. And as I said, Forestry Land Scotland owns this whole hill. There's a boundary fence on all sides and deer culling was already having a significant impact. And this meant that the deer population here was largely within our control without influx or upsetting you know, neighbouring landowners. And for trees in a project like this, you're normally aiming for a deer population of two to five deer per square kilometre. And at the time of starting this project, the deer numbers here were already down to 1.5 deer per square kilometre. So that was already a big box ticked. Access is another factor. It's one thing finding suitable sites, but it's another thing entirely to actually be able to get to them. When I say access, I mean for the ground preparation machines, uh, planting contractors and ongoing uh, deer management by the, the deer rangers. Another very important aspect of the project was we were able to take advantage of some of the excellent work being done at Trees for Life's nursery in Glen Modiston. Trees for Life have been working on local native species, including some that are incredibly rare, like the Montane Willows I mentioned earlier. And they actually supplied all the trees for this project but I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So we had existing habitat to work with. We've got the scale of the hill. The deer management was already bang on. And then we had a really good supply of native tree species. So we really were good to go. To the details of the project then, and officially it started in 2016 with the ground preparation. A small eight ton excavator was used and that same year, the first year of planting was carried out. Now we were aiming to plant 15 hectares at 10,000 trees per hectare. To make the project a little bit more manageable, we broke this down over five years. So essentially 30,000 trees were planted each year. The reason for planting so densely was to mimic a natural seed pulse in nature. So when you get a kind of disturbance, you open up areas for lots of seed to germinate at the same time and you get very dense growth of young trees. And this also allows a lot of mutual uh, shelter from the elements and even from browsing as well because the trees towards the centre of those dense groups are obviously a little bit less accessible than the ones on the outer edge. Now you might be thinking that out of a potential thousand hectares to work with, 15 hectares is quite a small area. Our aim here was never to reforest the whole hill by planting. What we really wanted to do was create a robust, well-established seed source for the future. And hopefully once that gets going, it can then become a self-sustaining habitat. And I said we planted 30,000 trees a year for five years. We ended up, we got a few extra trees each year and uh, we actually managed to squeeze a bonus year out of the project. So overall, we were somewhere in the region of 185,000 trees planted on this site. Planting was carried out each year, usually by three or four planters. And we would always aim for sort of early April. So hopefully all the snow had melted on the site, but obviously not too warm for putting trees in the ground. The same people doing the planting would also carry out the fertilizing. I really can't state enough how critical fertilizing is to a project like this and ensuring that the trees have the best chance possible of establishing themselves well. Many soils in our upland environments in Scotland have com been completely depleted uh, of natural minerals like phosphate and potassium, which is the fertilizer I'm talking about for this site, not nitrogen. We're not interested in nitrogen for this. Potassium and phosphate really are cr critical elements in tree root growth, uh, drought tolerance, nutrient cycling, the list really does go on. And you'll see time and time again examples where kind of this upland native wooden planting has been carried out and nearly all of the site has completely failed and more often than not 
it's because it hasn't been fertilized properly. The fertilizer is a slow release fertilizer and we applied 65 grams per tree and we basically put it in a, a 30 centimeter circle around the tree and uh, the reason for that is it should hopefully encourage the roots to grow out from the tree so the tree can establish itself. We are eight years on now from the first year's planting and two years on from the final year of planting and the results have been very positive. Growth has been relatively slow which is to be expected with this kind of exposure on poor soils at this sort of elevation but the survival rate has been very high. Some of the trees are looking really robust now especially some of the the montane willows. Overall deer haven't been an issue which was expected and hare have actually had the much bigger impact but nothing too significant. Uh, many of these species have evolved to cope with a certain level of browsing, especially the more shrub-like species. We are really starting to see a change in the landscape as these trees put on more and more growth each year, which is really fantastic to see. We've also now created a new population for some of the rarer willows, and hopefully the site as a whole will become an important seed source for the future. I suppose I'd just like to end this by saying, you know, we have thousands of hectares like this in Scotland and I really don't think we have the luxury of just sitting back and waiting 150, 200, 250 years for things to happen naturally and of course we're not even guaranteed for those things to happen naturally huge areas like this have no existing seed source at all and even if they do, it's often very limited to just one or two species. And I feel like when opportunities like this area here present themselves, I feel like we really need to be bold and intervene and basically give natural processes a helping hand. But most importantly, if we decide to intervene, we have to manage these sites properly. And what I mean by that is we can't just stick trees in the ground and walk away. These sites have to be managed. They have to be planted properly, correct species chosen. We need to take notice of soils. You know, we need to fertilize. We need to do the deer management. We need to do all these things to make sure these sites are successful. And I've seen it so many times where these things just haven't happened. Sites fail and then these sites are almost used against us when it comes to trying to reforest these upland areas in Scotland. But I'll end it there, hopefully you found this project interesting. If you have any questions at all, because I'm sure I've missed quite a few details, please leave them in the comments below. I'll leave additional links in the description to other videos and information on this subject. And hopefully I will see you on the next one.